Hey, we got it. We're live, though. Right. We're live. What's up, Impact Nation? Welcome to Impact Players Volume 3. I'm here. I'm actually really, honestly, truly excited. We have a very special guest by the name of Anthony Trox. Um, I'm very excited. And Anthony, I'm going to introduce you in a second, but I actually want to tell you why I'm excited. So Anthony is a former NFL player turned transformational shift coach. All right. He's helped people uncover the gap in their potential so they can shift into their ideal identity. As a successful entrepreneur with 10 plus years experience at seven figure businesses, an international keynote speaker, a published author, Anthony is passionate about shifting people's identities to that next level so they can, they can go wherever they want in life. He has appeared on mm -hmm. several major television networks and was the first NFL player ever to hit the buzzer on America Ninja Warrior. That's awesome. Anthony is happily married to his high school sweetheart. That's beautiful. And loves being a father to three lovely children. Anthony, this is why I'm excited yeah. to have you. How are you? Thank you, sir, for coming. I'm doing well, man. That's a, that's a good recap of like everything. I mean, that's, that's solid. But yeah, I'm just, the, it's, this is why I tell people, which it sounds odd. Like I'm, I, you heard all that. I'm legitimately a regular guy with like an irregular desire to help people. So yeah. I don't think of myself as some crazy, amazing. I'm just a dude that just uh, hangs out with my kids, my family. But when I go to work, man, I go to work to help people's lives. Yeah, man. You might appreciate this thing, actually. Can you see that? Yeah, it's a switch. It's an on-off switch. I used to, so I used to install car stereos. Yeah. When I was a kid, and those were the switches we used to put in the cars. A hundred, yeah. that exact switch. Yeah. I used to help yeah. install for people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is crazy. It's fascinating. And I don't know if it, like, tell me if this is kind of what you do. And if it is, I think it's really, truly fascinating. But so, like myself, I was mm -hmm. off for, I would say, like 10 years. Like, I kept failing in businesses. I kept giving up in businesses. I was like 50 pounds overweight, super unhealthy, toxic relationships, addicted to everything. I used to live in an electrical closet, lost, had no why, not spiritual. Yeah. In other words, I was off. Yeah. And then from literal blood, sweat, and tears, I figured out a few things you can do to kind of flip that bad boy. And then I realized that when you are on – and we're not using very branded or, or sexy language, but when you're on, you right. can pretty much accomplish anything you want. You yeah. Know? And this is something that truly fascinates me. So is this what you do? Do you go, do you help people go from off to on? You can call it that. I would, I wouldn't say off to on. A lot of people are on. This is the difficult is usually when you have people that are on like yourself, you, you, you're on, right? Some people are on, but they're climbing a ladder leaned against the wrong building. They're doing all this work putting time and effort in, but then they get to the top, like, holy crap, I didn't want to be here. Or um, the biggest thing is they hit this, this, uh, this comfort, we call it the comfort zone, right? They hit a wall and then they start telling themselves like, I can't have success because I just, I, I thought I'd be farther along by now. Or for some reason I've taken the courses, read the books and then the programs, hired the coaches, but I'm just not there. And so what a lot of people run into is, is uh, it's more so you have this gap between who you are and who you need to be. And this is like, you know, basic concept, but this gap is representing um, the areas where you can't figure out what the hell is wrong with you, like where your, your progress is, or it's the gap that says like, Hey, you know, I, uh, I can't find the solution. can't find a strategy. Or I can't apply what I've learned. And so what I do is when I say, I shift the identity all roots to this. At the end of the day, there's a way that you wake up and you go through your, your, your natural autopilot, right? It's just, it's who you are. And people look at you and I say, man, this guy, Akbar, man, he's killing. He's got these, you know, t two comic club things behind. He's a special individual. This guy is just, he's just a crazy different dude. I could never be like him. But I bet the way that you wake up, yes, you put effort in, but you put effort in and the outcome is these things you see behind. And it's what I call your autopilot. A lot of people are an identity that is operating at such a lower tick that they put the same amount of emotional effort in you do, but their tick, their output sucks. And so I don't have people go from off to on more than I have them go from who you are in your autopilot to shift that to be able to operate a higher tick with the same emotional output so you're not draining your soul and like like drudgery and, and like doing craziness but it's like hey i just get up and do this and people like they're like well how, how does he do it it's like it's just who i am when it becomes who you are the results become way more natural and they flow so i i help people stop complaining stop making excuses um you know operate at a different level to where the in fact their habits their, their natural output Create so much more to where they never get stuck. Like a lot of people get stuck. So like help them get uh, stuck. Tell me like some cool stories. Like tell me some of your coolest stories on how you help people. Like where were they? Yeah. So, oh, so this will make it make sense. So I got this woman named Shannon. Shannon's awesome. And Shannon is the person we're we're working with. And so 
Shannon wanted to do these live events. She wanted to actually have this podcast that went out and these live events. The thing was she created this live event at her, you know, her local area. And she's like, I'm going to try to get people to it. So her thing was, I'm going to go and just put flyers somewhere because she was scared to put herself out and say, I got this amazing thing. Had the information, knew the program, knew, the, knew all the stuff she had to do. But then she didn't, she couldn't put herself out there enough to boldly stand on the mountaintop and say, pay me money for this. Right. So a lot of people nowadays are getting that level. Like they'll create this cool stuff in private in the background. Like it's going to be awesome. But they're not like this. You got to pay me for this. Right. So I started having her do these actions, which was like, literally, I need you to go to a hair salon, nail salon, church, walk in there. And I need you to get attention and tell people that they need to listen to you and, and talk about this that you're going to do. Because what happens is when you do that, you now become this individual that people are like this person's got to be a little bit crazy because they think this is awesome. And maybe it is. Awesome. Let me find out with this. I'm going to pay you some money to find out. And that, that's kind of how that, this, like, think about it's like that energy is contagious, right? It's like they did this yeah. study in, in Germany and they had this abandoned building, right? And they had an abandoned building. There was no sign on it. And mm -hmm. they hired a bunch of Hollywood extras or, 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 or actors to just make a line outside the building. And what ended up happening, what they observed was, was, was fascinating. Tourists and just other townspeople saw that line, had no idea what it was for, no sign, abandoned building. They just ended up joining the line. Yeah. To see what the situation was. <laughs> it's a belief thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that I tell people is that you, you have to, in order to get the next level of what you want, it's going to be determined uh, based on the next level of who you actually are. And so for her, she had to get to the point where she now does it. She'll go into places boldly. It was scary at first, very difficult, but where she was like, ah, I don't know if I can go ask people and do that. She did it, got it working. Now she's like, yeah, I do that. And it's a different sense of confidence, different sense of a mindset, different sense of habits and activities. And that's the difference. There's a reason why some people have what I call the Midas touch. Like I bet if, if I was to take everything from you right now, somehow magically you'd make it work. And it's not because of the tools you have, you just, you'd find a way. It's just a different identity to who you are. And then we all operate all day long with this ego that floats around us. And everybody calls the ego like a bad thing, but it's actually a phenomenal tool. Your, your ego's position is in place. Like imagine like an orb, like imagine it's like sticking a floating orb around it. Anything that comes in that vicinity, it knocks the thing out, right? This orb's protecting the stick. The stick's your identity. And when your identity says, I'm a great dad, I'm a great mom, I'm a great business coach, that orb, the ego, it protects it with the actions. So for example, if you're like, I'm the guy that has these three comic club things back there in the middle of the night when it's time to get something done and you're like, I don't wanna do it. Your identity says, no, no, Akbar, you're the guy that does that. And your actions show up and get the work done when everybody else would sleep or go to bed. And, and so it's just a matter of understanding that you have to first set the identity and believe it's who you are. And then as your actions go throughout the day, whether it's like, I'm tired, but I gotta get this done, it's who I am, or I'm a good yeah. mom. Like, what does a good mom do? Like, I gotta show up and pick my kids up, feed them food. like. It's the same kind of stuff. Yeah, no, that happened yesterday. Or matter of fact, because I'm traveling a lot um, in the next couple of weeks. So, like, I'm, I'm slightly behind on my work. <laughs> and yeah. I, wanted, I need to record a module for our, our, our course, The Coach's Secret, giving it's an A to Z eight-week blueprint, showing people how to launch a seven-figure coaching business. Yeah. And it was Saturday. And I don't work on the weekends, to be honest with you, because I hang out with, with the family and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, I was like, honey, I got to go to work, man. I got I to gotta film this module because I'm, like, traveling a lot. And I came in the office. I'll be honest. I just didn't feel like doing it. You know, I just it was Saturday. I'm not accustomed to it. I'm not in the mind frame. Yeah. I, I really don't want. I love working, and I love, and I'm, I'm a work. I'm admittedly a workaholic, but I just didn't feel like. It. But I, you yeah. know, I, I had to be. I guess a professional, but like, dude, you know, look. I, and I talk about designing your life, and look, you should you should really love most of what you do in a day, and I do. But once in a while, let's just be honest. Like you know, let's put the you know, once in a while, you got to do something you you don't want to do. You know what I mean? You have to. And mm -hmm. that's listen, man, I want to talk to you about something. It's just on my mind. It's kind of, it's totally off topic. That's cool. Strange topic. But you were, you were an NFL player, right? I did play in the NFL. By the way, I'm ignoring everyone here. Guys, thank you for, for, for listening. If you have any questions for Anthony Trucks or myself, just post a question. Um, just yeah, I can't know. see him, so I'm glad you can. Yeah. No, <laughs> let us, what, what do they say? Let us know where you're from and where you are and, and all that good stuff. So here's the thing. Yeah. Who would you used to play with? Bucks, Redskins, and the Steelers. Nice. Um, so here's the thing. How long did you play? I got hurt in my third season. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Sorry to hear that. I, right. I went to Italy. I think it's better. Yeah. 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 I, I went to Italy. I went to Italy. And 
I took a tour from an old school Italian, okay? And he showed us the Colosseum. By the, Ooh, I, by the way, I'm about to share something. I mean no offense to anybody. I, I'm just talking. I have no agenda with this. He gave us a tour of the Colosseum. This is an old school Italian guy, right? Old man. And he's talking about the gladiators. Now, the gladiators were warriors who fought in the Colosseum for 500 years. And I forget mm -hmm. the number, but I think hundreds of thousands of people were slaughtered and animals were slaughtered during those battles in the Colosseum. And there were stadiums, and people would come and watch people battle to the death. Mm -hmm. and this old man said, by the way, I'm a, I'm a Cowboys fan. Okay, I'm a Cowboys fan. Okay. Um, this old man said, with tears in his eyes, he says, this was the, the you know one of the biggest blunders of our, our and he's a patriot, patriot. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest blunders in the history of Italy. It's a shame mm -hmm. what we did. And he was like apologizing for Italy. What he was saying is that it, it, was, it, was, it was brute. It was mm -hmm. uh, non-human. It was disgusting mm -hmm. what we were doing. Sometimes I, and I look, and I don't mean to be a hypocrite. I'm a football fan. I'm a football fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I feel like, man, I probably really shouldn't be because I, when I watch football, and it's funny because when I came back from Italy and I saw the football stadiums, I'm like, wait a minute, that looks exactly like the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And then, wait a minute, every five minutes, someone's freaking leaving on stretcher. And mm -hmm. the sports fans are so crazy like me that like when my team's playing like Tom Brady or something, I want them to sack him so hard. They forget. Mm -hmm. He forgets his name. And I'm not a violent yeah. person. And that's that's like that's like soft compared to what other people are saying, right? Yeah. And I'm watching people, football players getting taken out by stretchers. I'm seeing the documentaries where they're dying from brain damage and, and all sorts of craziness, all sorts of mm -hmm. damage. And I'm saying to myself, man, you know what? I'm not a futurist, but I tell you what, I guarantee you that the future generations will look back and say, I can't believe that you guys watch these people. Yeah, I know you paid them well. But I can't believe you watch these guys literally kill each other on the field for your entertainment. And this is something that's been battling in my mind. Mind you, I don't mean to be a hypocrite. I'm a, I'm a fan. I watch every week. I, I, my son, I watch with my son. But I, yeah. I feel guilty sometimes, you know, and I think about it. And I'm like, man, is this right? Should we be supporting this? Yeah, yeah. I, I would disagree. And I, I well, one, I would uh, I respectfully disagree, but I, yeah. I, I oh, disagree no, with, it, with a true perspective. I see what you mean, right? People are going to look back. I think societally we, we, we take out the aspect that we all have aggression. We all have it. Like it shows up differently in men, differently in women. And there are certain things between rugby and football and yeah. boxing and UFC fights that like it's a necessary evil to get the aggression out. And I think that there are some people that, uh, that they may watch that and do that and, and they will go compete into their own thing. And I don't know if we're looking at it, like I don't look at it as a sense of I get this aggression out because I want to see them hurt. I think if we were seeing it like the Coliseum, I want to see somebody die. Like there's part of you, yeah. Like yes, you want to see. Yeah, but wait a, minute, you know, now, now, wait a minute, Everybody wants to see the opposing quarterback on his on his back. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I, I personally, would, I want to see him sack it. But I want I want it so they win the game. I'm not wishing that he gets sacked. I'm wishing he doesn't get the ball off so that the guy catches the football. And then I want my team to score a touchdown. I want to express an elated ah yell. I want to you know I want to yeah. do that. Yeah. I'm not going on like I'm not going on like oh yeah I hope that somebody gets their leg broke today. You know, like, no, I, yeah, I don't feel I like that. A different either, thing. Though, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and I think the big thing is societally in America, and I think all humanity, we always have the aspect of if you take out that aspect of the sports, the the the, the movement, you're you're limiting our society to an aspiration that's solely mental. And I think it would it would aid. I think it would hurt our society in the terms of like progression, future thinking of everybody would just be sitting on the couch doing nothing all day except for like the the uh, Wally floating watching the screens right so this gives you like i want to i want to be like that and we sensationalize them because it makes kids want to do that so it allows kids to be more active to be more physical to be outside to do like to move a little bit and societally it forces you to have to like think like look at that guy so big and buff man i should go to the gym again so i think sports are necessary to keep us focused on we have bodies that are meant to move so we should still move them um and i think it also I'm it's, a, it's a a aspect of its camaraderie i'm a sports fan okay i played baseball yeah. so do i um, I, I love basketball. I love football. I played. I, I, my son is in Mont is in um uh, is, is Montessori school. It's not even pre K. He's three years old. I've yeah. put him in sports classes, but mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. I would not want him to do boxing or Neither. football 
or UFC, anything that like dude where people are just like getting crippled. Like yeah. a safer sport, like like baseball or something. Like bat, you know, I think yeah. like, I don't know, man. It's and it's and then it's kind of hypocritical too, right? Or for me, I feel I I, I have these like yeah, I think there's also things that, that are taken away different from the sport. Because at the same time, like baseball's great, good, right? But then I look at one of the biggest assets I have in the business world that I'm in now is I have a different sense of intensity and, and uh, instinctiveness that other people don't seem to have. Mm. And so there's there's a lot of things you learn in just sheer competition or be able to navigate the aggression or navigate the weird feeling you get when it's me and them. Like some people, it's me and them, and I can see them crumble like, oh, they get nervous. For me, I'm like, let's do this. It's a different mentality and so those sports they age you later in life if you understand the lessons that are being learned throughout so th there's a certain level of things that are benefits yeah do you think that sports though or by the way i don't mean to i don't mean to, i don't mean to interrupt actually you know in our in our you're I'm, fine you're good bro. Our, our branding company they said they said the former you have to interrupt every minute or it's you know the engagement goes off or oh, i know what you mean i totally know what you mean yeah <laughs> so yeah. i don't mean to be rude i'm just uh, <laughs> i get it yeah the thing is um, I lost my thought. Oh yeah. The thing is, but do you think that is natural for, for just entrepreneurship where they just have are naturally competitive and they want to like entrepreneurs are problem solvers? No, I, I think it's not natural because it's natural for the successes. It is not natural for all the entrepreneurs because a lot of people are looking for the, they'll chase, they'll have a regular job on the side, call themselves an entrepreneur and chase the same thing for a long time, never making headway. The ones who all of a sudden climb are successful are the ones that do have that, however. I believe is a, a different a different sense of how to attack the world um, and go after what you want to create this. You're carving out and trying to sell the world on you. That's not an easy thing, you gotta sell the world on you, which means you're gonna be a lot of people that challenge you. If you don't have that grit to push through because somebody talks bad on the internet about you, yeah. you talk away or if you're too fearful to launch your thing because well, what if they say something and no. what if I'm wrong on a live stream? Like, so yes, no, it's not a natural thing. It's I think it's normal for the successes. Yeah. But this is where the identity stuff comes in. Because who yeah. I am, here's the biggest thing people don't grasp about identity is you what you create creates you. So for example, Akbar has created this, he put the work in, built this business, got success. So what happened is you put it out like boom, I got these this business that's built, I'm doing amazing. So you get this confidence, this sense of self, this this ability to you have this strength. It creates um, I got this, right? but it's only because of what you create. When you were living in the closet, like that was not who you are now. And so you created something that created you, which created this sense of like, I got that. So it's not natural, well, but it's needed. Yeah, it's interesting. By the way, very fascinating. I was happy in the, in the, in the closet, by the way. A lot of people mm -hmm. have a lot of mental trash. And that just sounded weird. I was happy in the closet. But anyway, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> I get it. <laughs> a lot of people have mental trash, you know, and yeah. you're absolutely right, dude. I have a student here. We helped him hit six figures, right? Some jerk who woke up on the wrong side of bed says to she's a very talented photographer that helps photographers uh, yeah. increase their business. Mm -hmm. Some jerk who didn't get enough love as a kid or whatever. She's got so many testimonies from around the world, okay? Some jerk tells her, man, your course, I could have Googled that stuff. Mm -hmm. She went in hiding Ooh. for months. Not hiding. Yeah. She went offline for months. Because of this yeah. joker, this hater, she deprived so many photographers of her talent, of her light. And you're mm -hmm. right. Man. You're absolutely right. You know. This is fascinating. Now, you're saying that sports has equipped you to help shield you from hate and all these external mm -hmm. environmental factors so that you can keep having momentum and keep going forward. Yep. That's interesting. Now, what about someone? How can someone develop these skills if they were never in sports and so on and so forth? You create. I mean, here's the thing. We are investment biased humans. We, we put something in, we want to return. I put money in, I want to return my money. I put effort in, I want to return. A lot of the time, the effort you put out is not going to return in money up front. It's going to return in pride and confidence to keep pushing. Because people as humans, we'll protect what we create. So if I go back to that statement, you create, like what you create creates you. It's like, I don't have to play sports because sports didn't really aid me in business. It just gave me a different perspective of how I run into problems, right? But if I'm a person that says, I'm going to give every day, 
and I'm going to keep pushing, creating something. I'm going to, I'm going to spend the time, I don't know, mowing the lawn, right? I'm going to spend the time like building like my self worth, you know, doing personal development work. The return I want is going to be the sense of confidence and pride to keep going. So the more I create, the more success I get, the more that wind, like the winds get created to where my creation is this person that's a strong individual character wise, integrity wise, mental wise, that then goes out and does something. And I protect that with that ego bubble I talked about. My actions show up. Yeah. So you don't have to have played sports to have grit and grind. Yeah. It's going to show up every day in life. That's just one avenue it could have taken place. The problem is most people don't, they think that the overcoming of an obstacle was supposed to be the, ret the, the return they specifically want, money or a successful business. When reality is the return is typically what you need, which is that grit and grind to keep pushing so that the byproduct of you becoming that person is eventually what you want. You know, it's interesting, ego, you're talking about ego. You know, it's it's fascinating, man. A little bit, it's like anxiety. You know, I used to have a crippling anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And it was debilitating. I couldn't do anything. But a little bit of, that was because I had too much anxiety. But mm -hmm. a little bit of anxiety actually puts your body scientifically into survival mode. You know, you're, you're, mm -hmm. your, your, your senses get heightened. You're sharper. You're more alert. You're more, yeah. you know what's going on. It actually helps you mm -hmm. perform, survive. Um, yeah. I, you know, and, and a lot, you can talk about a lot. Water is one of my biggest secrets of my life. It's, it's uh, you mm -hmm. know, one of the main, uh, core reasons I lost 50 pounds. It's energy. Well, I can go on and on. I can talk about water for an hour. But too mm -hmm. much of it will, you know, I'll die. I'll drown myself. Kill you. Drown. Ego is very interesting. Ego is very interesting. Uh, I, you see a lot of the times people have too much of an ego and then they fall into mm -hmm. traps and they fall into problems. That's a dangerous space that I'm, I'm actually very wary of myself because, you know, especially, you know, especially when you're on the online space, you know what I mean? It's not like you own a McDonald's and oh, know yeah. who the hell you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when you're in the online space, everybody sees your face. It's different. Um, what do you do? They want the person with that. Yeah. What do you do to make sure your ego doesn't kind of take over and, and turn you into a bad guy? Well, I think two big things. One is I have people around me that keep me in check, right? So there are people, I always have these three, I call them three wise men in my life. I got one person in my life that has nothing to do with my profession, my world that I respect enough to take their real feedback, right? So that's the first person. Second person, Ooh, I mean, like, someone in like business. A relative or? It's a close, my best friend. We don't talk about anything work. I just talk life and he checks me often and I'm like, oh, all right. So you have to have someone that can get in the ego. Second person, something business that's not in my industry so I can get perspective on just what's going on in the realm. Someone else is gonna be the third person in my industry as a colleague. And you gotta respect these people because when they say something, you have to be able to pull your ego to the side and listen. I think what people all see as ego is all bad and it's all negative, but ego is the confidence that lets these guys get up on, you know, say football and show up and you know, I'm the baddest receiver out here right now, come get me. Because if you don't have that on, in football, I smell blood and I take your life from you. Like it's a different, like I used to love the guys who didn't have that, that umph, right? Is that the online space, confidence though? It's, it's the thing, it wears the line, right? So if you think about it, there's no definitive line and, and everybody keeps pressing ego and saying, it's horrible, it's bad, it's gonna mess you up. But I, I think that my ego is something that I'm in check with because I have people to help me keep check of it. But it's also the driving force that tells me, Anthony, you're the guy that gets up and, and teaches people. I think you better get up and figure that out. If you have a question or something you don't know, learn it. Think, so if somebody asks you a question, you can answer it. That's my ego. It's not a it's not a, a confidence thing that I just know this. It's the ego saying, dude, you better figure that out if you don't know the answer to it. You got to help people's lives. You got to know these things. And that keeps me driving. And so I, I think in the online space you mentioned, it's paramount because I would never sign up with a coach who didn't, at least when he was talking, think he was the best at it. And that's the ego. It's not a confidence all the time because confidence, I think, has its own space. But I need someone with a little bit of ego that's not that's not putting it out there to cause harm or to be detrimental to other people. If the ego is I'm the greatest to serve, then I think it's a positive ego. It's interesting. I guess I agree with you. I guess my definitions are just a little different. Like I agree confidence yeah. is really important. I guess I mm -hmm. have uh, – I guess when I think when, when someone's like, you know, if you want to play word association, like if somebody says basketball, you know, Michael Jordan, somebody says Rachel Ross, someone says friends. Yeah. When someone says, says ego to me, and by the way, I'm very big in a con I think confidence is extremely important. But when, mm -hmm. when I hear the word ego, I, to me, it's like, oh, I think I'm better than you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like in a negative way, like, oh, you, oh, no. Like, because we're all, I, you know, we're all equal in the eyes of God. We all have gifts. 
And then it's like when we, because everything is from God, right? Like the fact that I'm breathing yeah. is a gift from God. The food is a gift. And it's like when I start saying me, 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 but wait a minute, we got to chill because it's all from God. Like we could have easily been born in extreme poverty in like Africa somewhere. Matter of yeah. fact, my parents were born in, in Nairobi, Kenya, Africa. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I haven't given this a lot of deep thought, to be honest with you. I need to, and I'm glad we're having this conversation. I'm going to reflect on it. I'm going to do some research. I'm going to do some study. But I agree. Confidence is extremely important. It's a lot of people, bro. You know, I'll be honest. Here's the thing right now. I'm going to go on a little rant, if you don't mind. And then actually, we'll, we'll, yeah, let's do it. we'll wrap up. Yeah. We're online right now. This is the internet, right? It is the internet. Last I checked. <laughs> The internet really, if you studied it, didn't actually get popular until the original iPhone came out. In other words, mm -hmm. like a, a, a real a, a best-selling smartphone came out because then everybody started using the phone. That yeah. was only roughly like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. the internet right now is like, and no one talks about this, it's really in its infancy stages. Do you see what I'm saying? It's still billions, it's still billions of people that are not online. And there's still so many people who can't even uh, accept payments online or pay. Like they, there's no Stripe. Like they can't even pay yeah. you or like Bitcoin for third world countries. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Right now, it is. It's in such an infancy stage. It is so e like that's why I get so upset. Like when people say, "Oh, I, I don't know how am I supposed to get clients." Like, wait a minute. It is so easy to get clients right now. Everyone's looking for that person who can solve their problem. But the problem is you don't. You don't have your hand raised. You don't have that awesome. confidence or whatever word you want to use to stand up and say, hey, dude, I'm actually really good at funnels mm -hmm. or mindset or bots or whatever the hell ever. You know what I mean? And I think you're doing great work, bro. I think you're really, truly making the world a better place. And we'll, we'll, we'll end on this note because the show is called Impact Players. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, you really do great work, bro. I mean it. Um, Thank you. Because you're actually helping improve the quality of mankind by helping people be really all they can be. How has, you know, you're in seven figure businesses, right? How, so, you know, you're doing well. How has impact, what role has impact played in your success? It's, it's, it's everything for me personally. I'm not saying it's like, so it's funny you say this. I think that there's a confusion between confidence and ego. When you say that, I'm like, that's the problem I think with society is everybody is scared of looking like an egotistical person, but they got to be confident. So how do you play the two? And like you said, everything's gonna be just serving people. And I think when, I, when you said when I hear ego, I think, you know, self-serving. And so I found that for me, like I'm a very selfish human in this aspect. I grew up in foster care, given away at three. Like I really early on had nobody, nobody cared. My mom didn't even care about me. So I had this desire and I always have, like I want amazing thank yous from people. I want someone to say, holy, thank you, you matter. And I realized like probably like a decade ago that I could get that if I gave every part of my soul to working to help you. So if I give all of me, I get that thank you that makes me feel good. So I'm, I want that thank you, but I'm not going to get it unless I make your life amazing and great. So I am self-serving in that aspect. And within that is a positive service to the world. And so when I look at my ego, Anthony's ego, my ego says, I, I want to serve Anthony. But in serving, the only way I can serve Anthony is by serving the world. And so like what I create, how I roll, do some things. So it's my, my ego is bracked around like, I'm going to be the guy that when I show up, I live this world every day. I like. Genuinely, like my entire, I have boards in my, my house that says today, make somebody better today. That is my goal every day. How it happens, who knows, right? But my ego is wrapped around, that's the guy I am. And so when I'm that guy, I'm going to show up with my actions to be that guy where I need to. So like, if it's like I get a mess in the middle of the night that's super weird, I respond to it even though I'm like, I really don't, I'm with my kids, but this person needs something. I'm that guy. Or if I have like, you know, some weird person that's had a, a problem in the business and like they're not happy, I'll personally reach out because I'm that guy to make your life better. And so that my ego is tied up in that and it is self-serving but when i get the thank you it's only because i helped you that's how i operate excellent man listen every every guest you know i don't tell them you can you can tell you can tell them anthony we don't talk you know i don't tell people hey on the show tell everyone that in, uh, giving matters tell everybody impact is the key <laughs> no, i don't you know, there's no notes here the only thing i get before the interview is his bio and that's it he gets my bio i get his bio that's it uh, you know, every guest says the same thing, guys. Success leaves clues. You got to give. Follow it. Give in order to get. Anthony, you're you. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Um, I did, man. I like how you think. I like oh, thanks, man. <laughs> um, 
do you have something, you know, I don't, I hate to put you on the spot. We probably should have talked about this before, but do you have something, <laughs> you know, for the audience where, where like a freebie where you can give them some value, but they can get in touch with you, maybe get on one of your lists or something like that? Yeah. So what we do, uh, we found this to be very helpful for people. So a lot, it's a newer concept, the identity aspect, right? Because mindset is saying like, I got a mindset, but it's me trying to think like somebody else. Whereas identity says, I am now that person who just happens to think like that. And a lot of people, there's three things are missing clear on who they really are, where they want to go genuinely and what's offering them. And so we hold free strategy calls. My team hops on the phone and we work you through a process. Um, it's free. It's usually between like 20, 30 minutes. Uh, and you can go to trucksteam.com to hop on a call and our team walks. Wait a minute. Through. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You guys are giving a free call that's going to do what? It helps you get clear on who you are. You're kidding. Where you want to go. And what, yeah, it helps you to find the gap. Because at the end of the day, that obviously is helping us get cleared in the marketplace of how we really can serve people. Um, and then two, it helps me eventually, if it sounds good, to become a client. So we have everything designed where I have, I have my speeches and my courses. And there's people that know who I am. Um, but a lot of people are like, man, I just need to get some clarity. And that's what we do. Uh, guys, I hope you're taking notes. This is how you run a business. You see Anthony as a, as a big successful business. What is he doing? He is getting people on the phone for free giving them immense value and guess what's going to happen some people uh, are actually going to go you know they're, they're going to buy obviously because they got so much value uh and they're yeah. going to buy if they get a lot of value this is actually how you do online this is this is the nucleus of how, how i've done online business how we've generated seven figures anthony obviously does very well it's really just that simple just give some value very, that that helps yeah. find a person what, what what do they need the most oh man they really need some clarity what's my skill clarity Perfect. Let's meet. Yeah. <laughs> like the e harmony. Exactly. You know what I mean? There you go. <laughs> so, what's that website? I'm going to put it here in the comment. Yeah. Trucksteam.com. That's a cool. Um, so, what's your team? Last name's like Trucks. It worked out. What's my team look like? Well, I got yeah. 11 people spread out across the world. Uh, everything from a phenomenal team that does the phone calls, people that help with the marketing, advertising, uh, funnel development, you name it. It's, it's something where I realized that I really had to get to the point where. I just create content with my videographers and the podcast and stuff. Somebody else creates that. And then I, I coach people and answer on stuff online. So I am the, the, I'm the engine of connection. Everybody else allows me to do what I do best. So what do you do? Like a lot of, do you do like one-on-one -on -one and group coaching? Oh, no. We, very minimal. I'm actually full one-on-one. -on -one. I have no room for one-on-one. -on -one. So right now it's group coaching. Yes. Okay, cool. So, so like, how does that work? Like, what does that format look like? So we have three different tiers of access. So it's called the shift starter program which is allowing you to get clarity, get a foundation to kind of unpack the garbage. And then the next one from there becomes the, the shift uh, accelerator. Shift accelerator allows you to actually find the plan that allows you to make that shift. So it's it's the actionable, we're going to make this shift. And then at that point, we go into options, which are mastermind. So it's done by yourself, then it's done with a small group, and yeah. then it's done in a small mastermind. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, bro. When I was talking about we're in the infancy stage of the online world, right? Because of that, because we're all early adopters and because it's all new, you see, when was the last medium of business? It was retail. I grew up in retail, okay? So yeah. I grew up in retail that's brick and mortar. That's what business has been like for centuries, right? Brick and mortar. Okay, then what ended up happening? There was a new way of doing business. The mail started getting delivered. Now people could do mm -hmm. mail order business. Okay, then yeah. TV was invented. Okay, now there's infomercials. Okay, then the radio is invented. Now there's the ra radio, uh, people buying for the radio. So mm -hmm. business was really brick and mortar for, for centuries. And then a few things, then the internet happened, right? Yeah. And here's what's interesting. A lot of people, they're looking at the internet like it's an alien, right? Like, oh, what are they? Oh, can you become rich online? And I was, you know, I was doing an interview the other day and someone's like, dude, you made it from nothing online. That's crazy. You made it from, you made it from scratch. I'm like, why? Why is that crazy? Because most people offline, they didn't inherit a business. They, they made a business from nothing. The same thing. Mm -hmm. and it's, like, it's the same thing. Like these ethical principles of persuasion, they're timeless. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I just find it so funny when people look at online things like, oh, that's weird. Or, but wait a minute. Like, for example, take a look at your value ladder. Well, my wife's part of some fancy gym called Equinox. And I'm taking a look at their menu. And it's like tier one trainer is like $100 an hour. And here's like the stack. Tier two trainer is like $200. And then they have tier X trainer, and that's like the max one who's had the max training. Like, dude, everything you see offline, like people are like, <clears throat> oh man, those guys who drive Lambos or whatever, that's so cheesy, right? But wait a minute, when you yeah. watch, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm just saying, well, wait a minute. 
when you watch those perfume commercials, what are they selling? They're selling sex. You got some beautiful lady in this silky gown. All day long. Water. It's the same. My message is, dude, stop treating the online world, the offline world, like it's business. You know, business, it is. business is business. That's a little rant, you know, that's neither here nor there, but I just wanted to get it off my chest. I get it and I agree, man. I think, I mean, I started with a brick and mortar business for six years before I went into the online world. A lot of what I learned with just customer service and helping individuals came from that experience. So I think the people that get online and have never done that, it is a little bit more difficult to start. What kind of business? At a gym for about uh, six oh. years and then sold it. Nice. That's, yeah. you know, that's, and that's a fun one. Yeah, that's <laughs> up and down, man. Well, Cooper, you've given us a lot of time. Give us the last thought. Like, if you, if this is the last thing you ever had to, if it's the last message you ever gave to the people yeah. of the world, you know, what would that be? Uh, man, last message ever? Uh, yeah. Wash your underwear. No. Uh, <laughs> man, I, I don't know if it would be a last one. I think it depends on the day. Today, my one, I think, would be. Um, a decent question, and, right? I think, I think, I think, be wrapped around. I always have a statement of like, own your shift. And I, I'm really big on if you want to upgrade your life, you have to upgrade your identity. And it starts with owning your shift. First thing is to own, like, I got a problem, I got to fix. It may not be your fault, but it's a responsibility. And then actually own your shift. You actually have to shift something because some people know stuff is, is a problem, but don't work on it. So now that you know it, do the work. Like, and then as you create that thing, it'll create you and your life will change. So own your shift, baby. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, guys. Check out Anthony Trucks. I think he's a pretty smart guy. Go to trucksteam.com. Check him out. Thank you so much, man. You yeah, spent some of your time in land. The two things not making any more of you spent some of them. Let's really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. No for All right, guys. You're welcome. Take care. Yep. Take care.